Virgil, when we get you get to fight week with Amir, what's your biggest job this week? You know, just to keep him calm, keep him focused, and, and um, making sure what he needs is tended to. Um, you know, observance. On a personal note, because you, you know you care for your fighters and you want to be happy for them, but if Amir wins, would it be your greatest achievement as a, tra as a trainer? Uh, in his case, it would be. Yeah, um, I considered even this past weekend a great achievement. You know, anytime they win, and you know, even like him and Andre Berto, they have you know some things in common. You know, they've been written off, and you know, and any ish, any uh, flaws they have has been harped on time and time again. So, you know, whether it's uh, whether you lose a lot of fights or how you lose a fight, you know, the, the boxing media in the world tends not to let it go. So um, it, it would be a great accomplishment. It would say that uh, from the time that we first met to this point that we've uh, crossed a major hurdle and uh, it would take him to another level. I mean, if he went Saturday night, nobody else will beat him in his class. They won't beat him. He wins Saturday night. Would victory be even sweeter for yourself and Amir, given the criticism that was thrown at the pair of you after the first couple of fights, particularly the one against Julio Diaz in Sheffield? Well, you know what? Um, the Julio Diaz fight was a good fight for me because he showed me that he had embraced the philosophy in the fight uh, if something happens things happen in fights and and when he got knocked down um, how he handled himself you know um, he got hit with a couple of good shots but you know people tend to remember certain things but when I then I challenge anybody to really look at that fight with the sound off I mean he beat the crap out of Julio Diaz you know with the exception of the 11th round and that one punch he beat him up you know Julio Diaz had to fight that way to win the fight. And but see, let's let's not slight Julio Diaz, which he was. He was a two-time world champion, right? He was only up one weight class. So why will we give other people credit for it, but don't give Julio Diaz credit for it? So it would be surely it would be sweet for you though again for those people who had criticized that the, the, this Ooh, relationship would never work. I won't even have those people on my mind, you know. I, I never have them on my mind other than when it affects, you know, the fighter, you know, the things that they would say about the fighter. And that's what drives me. You know, it never bothers me. It motivates me to help the fighter have the last say-so, not the last laugh. I'm not into mocking anyone or I told you so, now you eat crow. It's not that. It's the, the thrill of just overcoming negativity and criticism. That's what it is for me. Virgil, give us the lowdown on Canelo. How good do you think he is? Um, you know, Alvarez is a good fighter. Um, and, and in boxing, it goes deeper than just throwing punches. Um, you have to be an ambassador to the sport. You have to have a following. The networks have to be interested in, in you. Um, and, you know, he's done his part. Um, if you ask me, has he had some help along the way? Sure. But, I mean, what fighter or what person in my position wouldn't take help if it was offered to you, you know? Um, I could harp all day and say, well, he won a fight without even landing a punch to the head, Laura, you know? Um, he was ahead in a fight that he was down in the punch count and everything, uh, big time. On the jabs, power punches, the whole thing. Trout. Um, I happen to be one that agree with Freddie Roach. You know, I, I felt Cotto, based on punches landed, I felt he won the fight because you could say he hit him harder, but the hard punches have to have effect. Just because you punch me hard doesn't mean that you're supposed to get the benefit of the doubt. The hard punch is supposed to be visible to the person the fans, the judges, and everybody's watches. Cotto never wobbled. He
he never came out of the pocket with him. <laughs> you know, he didn't run from him. So you can't say the hard punches um, determine the outcome of the fight. Laura, I felt, won the boxing match but lost the fight because his body language and the, and the manner in which he fought the fight, he gave them a reason to take the fight from him. Um, so, but other than that, um, he's a heck of a fighter. Yeah. He might be a heck of a fighter, but what's convinced you Amir come win this weekend? I feel like he has a fight in him that he hasn't called up yet. Like all great fighters that have talent. We've all seen athletes in other sports, uh, whether it be in college or on the pro level, all of a sudden just call up a phenomenal game. You know, whether it be English football, American football, track and field, you know, they just all of a sudden, gymnasts, they just come out of nowhere, tennis, you know, and they call up this game just at the right time when all the cameras and lights is on, the biggest moment in their life, and they're able to perform under the lights. And I believe he's a performer. And I think that this type of situation where the, the element of danger, the presence of danger is real. Uh, he's an underdog in the fight. Um, he has no advantages in this fight, none. So I believe when his adrenaline gets to flowing, I think that I wouldn't be surprised to see it all come together. And he literally just leaves all of us with our mouths open. He has that ability to do that. Um, but that's within, you know, what I'm talking about. And if he can call it up within, then physically he could do it because he has the physical ability to do it. Hi, I'm fighting Canelo Alvarez on May 7th. So don't leave it too late. Subscribe to Box Nation now.